the combination or the dichotomy between innovation and regulation, I think is a false one. We will need both at the same time. I think this is happening if you actually look closer in all large blocks. And I hope that also in discussion today, we kind of get a little bit beyond that dichotomy and work out what the next practical steps are for Europe uh, to move kind of beyond this debate and really uh, kind of spur the, in and I guess really participate in the innovative competition in this space. Biotechnology plays a key role in Europe's biosecurity. Biosecurity, you could look at it from the perspective of globally secure food supply chains, uh, secure healthcare, uh, population health. All of these things are under threat from lots of different areas. Climate change is a really good example of how disease profiles are changing globally. And so how you stay ahead of that and prevent that damage is incredibly important. And this is where biotechnology works. You are looking at understanding what risks are, being able to predict them, being able to prevent them, being able to mitigate them when they arrive. And this is where novel technologies such as biotechnology play a really important role across all sectors. Small companies are really important for this. These are the guys that are taking frontier science and turning it into frontier products and processes. So all new breakthroughs essentially come through this innovative pipeline and there are always SMEs involved in it. So this entry of AI in the biotech sector um, is a both an opportunity but also uh, provides challenge that we have never seen before and uh, if Europe wants to be a pioneer in uh, safe AI we need to transfer this to also the application of the AI in biotech um, and if we don't do this right actually we we are risking to um, to really reduce the scale up of our biotech sector because the only technology that can really scale sustainably is safe technology. I think uh, biosecurity is not contrary to innovation, to growth and to development of new medicinal products, uh, of novel food, etc. etc. So I think these two things go uh, hand in hand. Europe has the highest standards uh, in terms of safety, safety in terms of security, etc. I think this is something that we should keep. Investors would not want to invest in technology that would um, be faced with trust hurdles later on or we, uh, with trust um, issues. Um, and that's why we need, Europe has to take the lead in investing in technology that has safety by design. Uh, so not thinking of biosecurity just as uh, regulation that we can do as an afterthought, but actually uh, a safety by design and boosting European uh, biotechnology industry that develops solutions that have European values and, and standards uh, at place. I think we can also do a lot in terms of stimulating innovation, in terms of stimulating competitiveness, in terms of stimulating new investments in Europe without jeopardizing safety. I think uh, we have a lot of these things already in the general pharmaceutical legislation proposal, also in the Critical Medicines Act proposal, and I think by reducing red tape, reducing bureaucracy, reducing unnecessary administrative steps uh, in terms of stim uh, stimulating investments, I think we can do a lot in terms of st uh, strengthening growth, in terms of attracting new uh, funding uh, and new investments uh, from global players, global companies in Europe without jeopardizing safety and security.